Welcome, one and all, in here, out there, all around the world. Welcome to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. And I am so happy... I am happy... I'm so happy to be here with you. And by here, I mean in any air-conditioned room. <laughs> because... Thank you, whoever did this. Because today in New York City, temperatures hit a high of 96 degrees, what meteorologists call hotter than the devil's grundle. <laughs> can I say grundle on CBS? I don't know if I can. <laughs> it is so hot in the city, Times Square had a naked cowboy and a shaved Elmo. <laughs> yes. I didn't realize he had the... I didn't realize I Elmo had got, the... Okay. Yeah. Elmo is a mammal, evidently. New York... New York is not alone in being hot, according to CBS News. Brutal and dangerous temperatures were felt from California to Massachusetts. Okay, CBS News, just say America. <laughs> That's like telling your partner, hey, before we get intimate, I should warn you, I have this little rash from my right toe to my left ear. <laughs> Out west, the extreme heat comes with a side of drought. California has imposed water restrictions this year, including one that limits outdoor watering to only one day a week. It's gotten so bad, Disneyland had to change the name of Splash Mountain to Dusty Gulch. <laughs> and coming up here, this might be the thing. This might be the thing we did. In Los Angeles, in order to curb water usage, water police are going door to door. That's got to be tense. Cops banging at your door, suddenly you're scrambling to flush all your water down the toilet. <laughs> quick, quick. <laughs> water police, are they're walking around the city looking for sidewalk puddles, a potential sign of misused water. Unlike New York City, where sidewalk puddles are a definite sign of mystery urine. <laughs> don't... Don't investigate. I'm curious. I'm really curious what's about to happen. <laughs> so far, normal people are doing their part, but Hollywood A-listers are going more than 200% over their allotted water budgets, and reportedly, one of the worst offenders is Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> And I understand, is this true? Is this, do we have this? We have exclusive footage of the water police raiding Stallone's house. Let's hit the slip and slide. Whee! These, these, that's a good movie. <laughs> I did not expect some of that. These heat waves are only going to get worse because Biden's climate plan is being blocked in the Senate by Joe I Hate Life on Earth Mansion. <laughs> so, President Biden held a press conference today to announce new steps to combat climate change, but stop short of declaring a national emergency. Yeah, you don't want to call a climate emergency too early. You got to wait until our internal temperature is 165 degrees in the thigh. <laughs> Then we're safe to eat. The president's non-emergency press conference... Really? Some turkey? Some turkey cookers in the audience? The president's non-emergency press conference was in Massachusetts in front of what appeared to be the bleakest, most desolate spot <laughs> on planet Earth, because nothing says everything's fine like a dehydrated septuagenarian broadcasting from the set of Mad Max Fury Road. <laughs> and while the president... Uh, we're sad. We're sad. While the president didn't declare a state of emergency, he did state that this is an emergency. Let me be clear. Climate change is an emergency. And in the coming weeks, I'm going to use the power I have as president to turn these words into formal, official government actions. In the coming weeks kind of undercuts the sense of urgency here. Are you choking? Don't worry. I know the Heimlich maneuver. I can save your life. In the coming weeks... <laughs> I think you do that with that. Do that. Do that. Do that. Do that. Do that. There you go. The president concluded. I'll end by telling you another quick story. I don't believe you. <laughs> uh. 
Please, let's hear this quick story. When we moved from Scranton, when Cole died in Scranton, everything died in Scranton. And my dad wasn't a coal miner. My, my, my great-grandfather was a mining engineer. But my dad was in sales, and there was no work. So we left to go down to Delaware. I told you where those oil plants were. But I remember driving home when you take the trolley in Scranton, going out North Washington and Adams Avenues. Within 15 blocks, we didn't live in the neighborhood, one of the most prestigious neighborhood in the region, in the, in, the, in the town where the Scrantons and other good, decent people live. There was a place, you'd go by a wall, but my recollection is it was somewhere between 15 and 18 feet tall. And it went for the essentially a city block. And you could see the coal piled up to the very top of the wall from inside. It was a coal-fired plant, a coal-fired plant. And all of that, all of the negative impacts of breathing that coal, the dust, were affecting everybody. But at the time, people didn't know it, and there wasn't any alternative. No doubt, he will be finishing that quick story in the coming weeks. <laughs> I think I'm 79 now. The president's directives today largely appear to provide more funding to or otherwise strengthen existing programs. Oh, good, because what we are already doing is clearly working so well. For a quick progress report, let's check in with our Late Show climate correspondent, Ira the Ice Shelf. Ira, how are the existing climate programs doing? Well, Steve, I'm confident that the federal government will... Ah! Thank you, Ira. <laughs> Thank you for that report. What's this? Wait, what? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm being told in my deaf ear that we have breaking news. This just in at 11.44 Eastern Time, I'm sad to report that actor Miriam Margulies says Arnold Schwarzenegger deliberately farted in her face while filming the movie End of Days. I'm sorry, I have a correction. We have... Breaking wind news. Here's what happened. Margulies explained how the historic smelt got dealt in a recent podcast. He was actually quite rude. He farted in my face. Now, I fart. Of course I do. But I don't fart in people's faces. He did it deliberately right in my face. I can't remember the date, but it was during the filming of End of Days in Los Angeles. And I was playing Satan's sister, and he was killing me. So he had me in a in a position where I couldn't escape, <laughs> and uh, lying on the floor. And he just farted. I haven't forgiven him for it. No, she hasn't forgiven him. She hasn't forgiven him, and I can't blame her for that. I think. Everyone who saw End of Days feels like he farted in our face. <laughs> the story is obviously shocking, but it's not surprising. Arnold has had a long and disturbing career of passing gas in front of co-stars. Allow me to break the ice. I'll be back. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> Had enough? We got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Ice T and author Michael Pollan. But when we come back, the hottest.
latest news trend is grandmas, and the trend would like to be.